I know you guys have been wondering where I have been. Well, there's been so much happening. Gunshots, bullying. Maybe just trying to discover myself. But today is a day that City Girls is back. And we are back to shake the system. I have today two extremely, extremely <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful females. Um, we have become friends, we have become sisters, we've been able to engage in conversations that people have never had. And as much as everything else, people try to make city girls about the bad bitches. Yes, 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 we can be bad bitches, but um, city girls is here to teach and enlighten. And for mothers, for sisters, for husbands, for fathers, for everybody that is just trying to figure out this life thing, just like you and I, this is what we're here for. Yeah, well, can you just tell... I know you, babe. <laughs> I know you so well. I can't even explain you. Can you just please tell us about yourself? Um, good afternoon, Debzan. Thank you so much for having me on City Girls. It's an honor. Um, long awaited. Long awaited. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like you said, I'm Labakang Brenda Mutsumi. I'm an author. I'm an international speaker. I'm a teen life coach and an HIV coach. And an entrepreneur. Yeah. What do you mean HIV coach? So HIV coach is um, instead of just having one or two sessions to counsel someone, I take them through a program of three to six months, depending on your need as a person, you know, because um, there's no manual to living with HIV, but um, I feel if I'm able to hold one's hand until a point where they're like, okay, I, I can do this, you know, without having to continuously call you or talk to someone, but obviously should something trigger in the future, I'm always there to be able to help. Um, so we basically talk um, disclosure, when do you disclose, how do you disclose? We talk different topics, dating with HIV, you know, um, living with HIV, the lifestyle change sorry, and so sorry forth. Sorry to ask you this, so are you saying you are HIV positive? Yes, I'm living with HIV. It's been what, about more than 11 years now or even 14? Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't know, because a lot of people are always embarrassed to say their status. Um, I think, I, I, I think kudos. I'm not embarrassed as shit. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> really? It is what it is. So what do you mean you're not embarrassed? Okay. Okay. So the second person that's here is a good friend of mine. We met in a club in Cape Town. And um, I came up to you <laughs> and I said, hey, girl, you know, you're hard. You deserve like billionaire. Can I tell you how I remember it? Okay. Okay, so we were in the bathroom and obviously we all know how girls' conversations goes. 45 minutes later, you were like, listen, this fake gold chain's not going to happen. You need more. <laughs> you were like, you really like open, I guess. I always knew I deserved it, but you, were, you marked it and I was like, okay. From then on, I was like, mm-mm. We can't be wearing nothing that makes your neck green. I'm Kristen. Sorry. <laughs> Bota? Kristen Bota. <laughs> you related to the Botas, the ap apartheid people? Let's say not the apartheid people. Which no, I'm from a very quiet family. We've grown... I've grown up in Mauritius. I never grew up in South Africa. Um, I left when I was about 10. Moved there. Schooling. Learned the language. Learned the people. Learned everything. And then I decided to move back after I realized it was a bit too small for mm -hmm. me and my big character. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Cape Town at 19 alone mm -hmm. and with like 2,000 rand. And I was like, right, <laughs> this is what we got. Started working in a club and made my way since then. That's where I met you. Yes, not at that club. No, Different one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kristen, so you are also saying that you are HIV positive? Yes, I found out last year in March. Okay, so I never really, let's just say I didn't really grow up in a place where it was a huge topic. Where is it? Mauritius. Mm. So it was really quiet. I grew up, you know, the only time you really use condoms, let's just say, is when you don't want to get pregnant. And I'm not trying to get pregnant, so the majority Usually. of the time... I would, but if I was in a relationship with you, like, yes, I would make sure we're good and proceed. Well, not really make sure we're good, but I would proceed with but you. But most of the time, not really. Yeah, like, you don't, I don't really, 
put pressure onto having sex with somebody. Like, it should be an all-natural thing. And if you have hidden agendas, like, I feel like on karma, that's on you. But I'm coming into it with like a pure. I don't know about that saying on karma, on 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 spreading. No, a like disease, if you if you're on, gonna do something to me no. without me really having information about it prior, or even just giving me the option to choose, that's where. But have you been horny though? Mm, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> because we live with HIV, we don't get hold No, I'm guy. I, 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 I get it on our. It's on karma. Mm-mm. You're horny. So sometimes. There's no condom. It's, it's not on karma, but it's, it's your responsibility for yourself to now bring yourself towards yourself. Before it was, I honestly never cared about, not cared, but it wasn't a pressure to go get tested with someone because mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect somebody to now go and hurt me out of their own knowing their situation and unknowingly, you know, infect me. That for me was was the biggest mind fuck because I really don't move in that sense in a way. Like you're not a hoe. Is that what you're saying? Like you know no, you know, no one that's giving I'm it up more to you. Like everyone. I wanna get married and everyone's just trying to play me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just trying to get I'm on a farm with my kids <laughs> and my husband and mind my business. And smoke my weed, not gonna lie. That's, that's been a major, it's been a help because I never, you said you went to therapy, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you help people with therapy yeah. and yeah. all of that. So with me finding out last year, I almost shut off completely mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm fine. Well, I'm I did fine. shut off at the beginning because I was writing my prelims. I was still in, in matric. Yeah. So I kind of had to shut off Do and you, concentrate. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, you were, you were like oh. really early. Whoa. So you, what do you mean writing your prelims? I was in matric. When you found out mm-hmm. that you're positive, <laughs> yeah. So how long? How many? How many more years were you having sex before that? I broke my virginity at thirteen. Wow. So mm. you broke your virginity at thirteen because you were a very sexual person, or you just? It wasn't a matter of being sexual. It's it's. Um, I wanted to fit in because I go to a multiracial school. I don't financially fit in there because my parents aren't well off, mm-hmm. but um, I had the opportunity to go attend the school, mm-hmm. you know? So obviously, socially, I also don't fit in that much because mm-hmm. I'm not the most popular girl ever. I'm big in size, you know, whatever the case is. So um, when we talk sex in grade seven or people have had sex... In grade seven, you, people are having sex. Yeah, they are. You... You become popular. So I was like, I want that. You oh, know, that I want people to talk about me. I I want whatever. Yeah, I talked about it because yeah. you were the one giving it up. Yeah. Oh. And I gave it up. And funny enough, the girl who we were talking about um, that she gave it up, she actually was lying. She didn't give it up. Oh, no. So my you, stupid ass. You, made, you made sure oh. that it was the truth. You really. were like, we're going to take this to the... Yeah. We're going to take it right down I to the I grew up with no backbone. Kilaban. Like, I would just... Like, to let's to jump, to I would it. jump. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Fair enough, you know, like, I... Okay, I waited till... Well, I didn't wait. I wanted to wait till marriage, not going to lie. Mm. But mm. my... Unfortunately, my stepfather passed. Mm. And I went to a house party. And... I was flirting with this guy the whole night, but not enough for him to think I wanted to have sex with him. And I was about 16, 17 at the time. And next minute I just woke up and like, True. it was happening. I, I don't... What, what do you mean woke up? You drank? And I the, was drunk. So you I fell asleep. Your first time. Yes, I fell asleep so in a house party. So you raped you? I don't know, because I, I don't really look at it like that. Because I did mm-hmm. wake up and then... I was like, okay, so this is what we're doing it. Like, we're doing it, and this is what it feels like, and it was all the new experiences. But it was years later that I realized, like, that was fucked up. He took advantage. I never spoke to him again. How old was he? He was probably, um, I keep hearing this thing, he was probably, like, 19 or something at the time, and I was was about 16. I don't really, I don't know, I only know his name, never spoke to him again, never nothing. So... Sure. I get where you're coming from because I did have a really like I think as a Scorpio no, I don't mean to see. bring yeah. no I don't mean to bring like planets into this and shit but mm. I as as a young person I was really flirtatious and oh. it was like exploring okay. my sexuality was a fun thing oh, but for someone to actually like cross the yeah. line was was no, a different a thing and once thing. that line was crossed oh I enjoyed my life no I had a lower self esteem so all my life. Um, I went around chasing for just attention, you know. Same. 
Why do you think that? So I think it goes back to the background and, and, and not kind of understanding why are we different here at home? You know, why is it that I live in a back room and not in a big house. And when I visit my friends, it's something totally different. So you your know mom what I'm was saying? like a helper or something? My mom, yes, she was a helper. And um, that's how I was able to go to the maturational school. And I just what didn't... What did you go to? Franklin Deers Fault Primary School. Okay. Yeah, so I just... It was that. It was the background. It was also a sense of not understanding that... Um, that I'm actually blessed to be going to such a school and actually concentrate on my grades, no, but yeah, wanna, you, don't you know, do fit in socially and, and stuff like Ooh. that. But yeah, it was that. I just didn't feel beautiful. I, I didn't love myself to a certain extent. So the moment a man was telling me I'm beautiful yeah. or I'm important or I matter, like, wow. then I was like, oh, wow, you know. Was yeah. it a man or a boy? Um, he was in the trick, so we could so see he's he was a, a man. He's a man. So I think we just also need to get to a point where now we, we've, we've both found out. Yeah. That, because we initially did a test before this and we saw all our statuses. So in statistics, it's supposed to be one in three, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's actually now at this point where you're sitting in this two, is is two, two, in, two, in one, two in one. Oh, two in one, sorry. Yeah. Two in one. So two in one. I'm 41 years old and I'm 24 25 tomorrow y'all <laughs> happy birthday to my body sweetheart <laughs> you 34 34 so these are completely three different generations yeah. of females yeah and we are we have we have we're carrying other females behind us at this point so what happens when you find out that you're HIV and why Let's start with you um shoo I Initially, went to go get tested because I was trying to prove a point to my friends and those around me that I am not HIV positive. Well, why did they think you were? Because um, I dated someone who passed away from HIV. I mean, HIV related illnesses. So you know, um, if you are seen with me, maybe we're friends or we date. Well, people like, are going to assume. Podcast, I probably have HIV. Trust. People are going to assume that you're also living with HIV. So it was mm-hmm. one of those if things. I don't hang up the double on her friends. <laughs> Yeah, HIV positive. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Which actually does trouble. Yeah. find out to me now when life has been tough I ask myself what must I do to prepare this girl for what is happening and Auntie Lebo and Auntie Kristen what first of all I don't think HIV is something that is it's 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 it's, it's not the end all of be all okay. that's the stigma of it all actually makes it the a stigma joke is worse than the, disease. the stigma is worse than the disease we have what we have RRV we have prep we have condoms we have everything mm. What do you say to this little girl right now to say for you to prevent yourself to be in a position when somebody can take advantage of you, for you to not mm-hmm. take the decision, even if you don't have money, even if you don't have a home, mm-hmm. even if you, what do you do to maintain that you're still this girl just sucking a sucker? Mm-hmm. I mean, what advice would you give? I think the most important thing, well, I'm going to, Give mommy advice and activist advice because um, as an activist, I believe in teaching our kids um, comprehensive sexuality education from a very young age. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, obviously it should be age appropriate. So for a six year old, you actually just teach them about their private parts, looking after them. And we do not call um, a vagina nana. Oh, no, no, you know, we need to give it its names because should anyone do something to that girl and they don't use a nana, for example, as a word, then 
you know, they might get away with it. Are you okay, baby? Mm -hmm. I just, for me, it's like, as soon as kids are involved, I, I literally want to, like, lose my shit because it's just, there are, like, so many kids in our realm that are getting affected mm. and that don't even ask words. Like, they're just playing with a ball mm. and mm. shit happens. Yeah, no, we, we go through the most in the country. Um, so, obviously, I believe in educating okay. our kids so that they know, you know, what rape is, what this is, what that is. Because as... Um, I think as a black or African community, we shy away from having these conversations. We, we wait until That's it's very true, late bro. or we wait for the TV to do it for us or whoever else to do it for us. So I believe in having these conversations and, you know, but also I think one thing I wish I was taught growing up is um, the importance of loving myself and understanding the situation I'm in, you know, and understanding that it doesn't really determine my future. And it doesn't determine who I can become. And it's not your fault. And, and just instead of... Look, peer pressure is not only for kids. It's there throughout your whole life. Whole life. But if you know where you're going and you got your head kind of screwed on properly... Do you think you got it from a black man? No, no I got it from... Who I got it from? Yes, he was black. Yeah. Mm. Do you I'm think never, white guys don't have? Listen, a lot of white people do, but the one thing that I took from this experience was the amount of silence that comes from it. Yes. Mm. And I've been told many times, don't do the podcast, don't do the interview, don't expose yourself. Did you embarrassing us? Eh? No, because it whole it comes with a lot. And that for me was more my drive because a lot of people are not talking about it. And I'm not going to lie, a lot of white people, white women, white men, it's very shunned upon and you hide it in your family and your uncles and your aunties know about it. But outside of that, it's not really spoken about. That is, is an annoyance for me because I don't feel like that is fair to anybody to have to... Live a lie, live in a secret. Hide like who you are. It's like having a flu. Why are we hiding? The it's not a flu. It's not a flu. It's nothing no, close it's not to a flu. flu. There's, oh, there's a lot that comes. No, I'm not even sad. I'm really not. The one thing that I can take, I guess, from finding out was I really started to love who I am mm. as a woman. Yeah. Like, I started to change everything. Yeah about who I hung out with, who I allowed in my energy. Mm. I, sex was nothing personal, yeah. ever. But it is ever, personal. ever. Like when, you're kid, when you teach kids that it's personal. No, it's very personal. It's and personal. the personal. energy that you transfer. Are you also crying? She's there. Uh, she's almost there. She's on really? her way. Yeah, Shame. but no, me, I'm there, but it's fine. It's like. I'm not sad, it's more, I'm a very emotional being and I do allow my emotions to yeah. come through as I'm speaking in whatever circumstance. I haven't really cried about it for a while yeah. because I'm okay with where I'm at now. Right yeah. now, I'm the happiest I have been in years, yeah. even before yeah. I found out. Yeah. I was not me. I would. I was always Kristen. I was always weird and goofy yeah. and... I've always been myself, but I allowed men mm -hmm. and other women to influence my decisions yeah, yeah. in a way. I w I'm always like on my shit and you can't tell me what to do, but let's go to a party here or let's go there or let's go do this and let's go do that. Think, I'll go. I, mean, I think one thing I've always tried to even teach my son is what society has tried to teach us is, in, is inclusion. 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 Like how you say that we're holding. You broke your virginity because you wanted to belong. You wanted everybody to know that you're that bitch that could have sex. That inclusion puts you into a lot of trouble. A lot, bro. Years and later, I, and I like, feel like yeah, as parents, we did the, the school systems and those, those kind of things. That inclusion thing needs to be taken away because you know what I mean? I don't have to belong. No. I, can, I could literally belonging be is good so at Belonging is what puts us no. in the same place where we are grouped and it's made us horrible people because mm. if somebody's not included in that, we excrete them like they're nothing. Exactly. Everything is now based on groups. Like, either you fit in Clicks, or yeah. you don't. And, and, I mean, I spoke to you so yesterday about it. And we have AIDS. 
or HIV? No, but listen but to this, this listen to this. So I obviously found out last year, right? Then it got posted. The yeah, it's noisy. <laughs> I'm noisy too. <laughs> then it got posted on social media. Sure. Two weeks after I found out. Yeah, so I was dealing... Yeah. That's so that's, that's obviously why we connected. I contacted you because of the cyberbullying. And I was, I was like, how can you help so me? She's like, I'm getting bullied. The person basically mm. was posting that this girl is HIV and I want everyone I to know. I don't know who it is you to this day. It is. No, it's still a fake profile. There's three, actually. I have screenshots of everything. Me, I'm very prepared, and I'm also just in a form of alignment. When it's supposed to happen, it will happen, and when I find out, I will find out. I don't really care too much yeah. because I always knew from day one I wanted to help people with this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, if I don't care about it and mm. I can go through my mental struggle, physical struggle, medication struggle, going to the doctor struggle. If I can go through all of that by yeah, my Christian. motherfucking self, sorry for the language, yeah. and, and you have nobody by your side, mm. you're sitting, I, listen, and a lot of I don't come, this journey alone. I don't come, like, I went to a public hospital, I was not in no private yeah, situation. you broke when you, when you finally get no money. I was broke as shit, I was negative in my account when I went oh, there. Zero. All I could do... And positive I, Exactly, blood. and the so day I that, found out, the that. next day, yeah. I had to fucking pay my rent. Sure. And I had fought, like, literally You're negative in my account. So, like when I was sitting in, in the hospital and having to sit with everybody and watching people that have way How worse things... It was fucking shit because I don't like waiting. I'm a very impatient person. We don't person. like white girls not to be on minus. Guys, so no, many people honest. will tell me that I'm lying. They will say I'm lying. How big water? They will tell me I'm lying. I swear they'll say you're not Where's broke. Money, you can baby? never be broke, and <laughs> I'm like, to you don't the understand. <laughs> <laughs> but sitting in that hospital, I okay. This might cause some rift on social media. I don't care. <laughs> Okay, this might cause some rift on social media. I don't care. Mm -hmm. What I am going to say is the medical staff have treated me worse mm. than actual society. Mm. I've had horrible You've nurses. You've got the stigma and discrimination from the nurses. Horrible yeah. nurses. I've had some amazing people. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's two doctors I know in my heart. I'll keep there forever. What kind of medication are you both on right now? ARVs. I'm just on that You're blue on the pill. One. Yeah, on the, the one pill. pill. Yeah, so I take three pills okay. um, of, of ARVs. Reason being, um, there's, there's, there's different regimens of ARVs because I think everyone thinks it's only one pill. So the, these are going to make me sick, but they don't even Wait. know. Oh, I heard about this one. Pass it. This is the good shit. <laughs> oh, my God, this is the good shit. I'm sorry, I keep hitting the <laughs> microphone. Wait, look here. Okay, so this is the Raiden. Let me see. And I've done, let me just get one out quick. So I've done, I've had a few, but it's just a small blue pill. So when I first started on these pills, obviously, I, firstly, I've never been one to be on birth control because I just don't know, I don't like what it does. Yeah. I don't like what it does to my body and just never been one for it. So for me to start taking medication, when I first got told, like, okay, everything's official, I did an at-home test when I found out. And my entire, obviously, world shattered. Um, then I went immediately to the doctor where she did further tests and I was with my partner at the time. Very in love with him. He was... He was definitely not the person that obviously gave it to me, but we were now in love and shit happened. We found out, went to the doctor together. The doctor was rude as shit. I got put on TB 
and this medication. And you're supposed to be on TB for like a year just to prevent you from getting excess issues and what what. So I was like, that's a lot of medication for one person. And the TB meds are horrible. And it also, it makes you, I don't know how to explain it, but it made me really, like, tired, mm -hmm. extremely tired. And I'm a very active person, and I lost, like, a lot of weight. So I was feeling very weak and not being able to be active, mm -hmm. and, and, and. Like, the things were just a lot, but I, I wasn't necessarily focused on how I was feeling at the time. I was mm -hmm. more like, go, 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 go. Don't feel, don't think, don't anything. It is what it is. Take the medication once a day. Fucking keep pushing. And I did that for a long your CD, time. Is your CD4 count like zero now? So yeah. low, baby. CD4 I found out. Zero. No, no, no. But I what found out. CD4 count no, zero. No, CD4 count no. It's your viral load. Oh, so I I'm now. Okay, okay, no, no, I'm now on uh, LDD. I got told two months ago I can have a baby now. I'm in the clear. Yeah. And I will without wait. Without having to take medication. Without when having to pregnant. take medication. When you're I pregnant. can Yes, I can still take my medication while I'm pregnant. All will be well. My baby will be well. And the baby will still take meds when they're born, just for six months. So just to clarify on the CD4 count, the viral load, So CD4 count is um, your immune. Everyone has CD4 count. Because I've heard people talk as if CD4 count is only for those living with HIV, right? So it's it's basically, in layman's term, the soldiers of your body, mm -hmm. you know? And then we've got the viral load, which is the amount of virus in your blood. So what happens when you take medication, your viral load needs to be getting suppressed, right? So it's like below and it's lower than detectable, like she said. And then your CD4 count should be going up. It can go all the way up to the thousands. I think mine is like on 800 and something. So which is, you're good. Yeah. Which is perfect. So why are you going to the hospital now? Um, because of your heart? Now, yes. What? So I've got inflammation around my heart. So I'm living with kidney failure. So I've got a bit of inflammation around my heart and other things. Do you have that problem? No, I don't. I've been very blessed. Um, I've actually experienced Nothing. kidney failure prior to me finding out, but that was when you speak about, you know, the kidney pains and whatever, mm. I I don't think I understand up to your level, mm. but mm. the pains yeah. are so excruciating mm. that it's it's like you just want to die mm -hmm. in that moment. You're literally just like, I cannot. Yeah. When I went in for kidney failure, they had seen me a year prior for, mm. um, uh, S uh, what is it, the uh, UTI. Yeah, yeah. And it was a severe UTI. Mm. And when I came back the following year for kidneys, they had asked me, do you want to do an HIV test? Do you want to mm. do this test, that test? And I said, I haven't that, yeah. done mm. one in forever, but do whatever the fuck you need to do because I'm in severe pain. I was in a wheelchair. Mm. Like, I couldn't walk. I couldn't mm. do anything. And then they put me... They did vaginal... I had the doctor's fingers inside of me mm. doing vaginal tests, doing piss tests, doing blood tests, mm. pricking me to the point where, like, I literally had a, a black yeah. mark. Yeah. And they came back to me four doctors later, came back to me saying, all your bloods are fine. Two weeks later, me finding out on an at-home test that I'm positive yeah. was like a big mindfuck. And then having to go to the doctor, wait another day to get reaffirmed that you're positive. Within that doctor telling you that you're nothing, basically. It's true. Like, I was with the man at the time, and she was like, next time you decide to have sex with a random person. A black man. Best. He was a black man, yes. Best. You know who you're dealing with. And I looked at her and I was like, I've never, my family is him? in, no, it's a she. Did you report her? No, I haven't. I didn't want to deal with shit at the time. I, get I didn't you. want to deal with anybody at the time. I think the I was least like, of anybody is yours. I had I never. I was going to take out my anger on her. <laughs> no, but I had never, I had never taken out my anger on any medical staff because a lot of my family in Mauritius is in the medical industry. Mm, okay. So... I've always been respectful of those because I know the hours that the they work. I know the pressure through. and everything. Yeah. And for her to turn around and say something like that to the man that at the time I thought I was going to marry. I honestly 
feel it's like that to a certain extent, but it's better than what it was okay. years back. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yes, the stigma is there. Yes, discrimination is there. But I think a lot more people, the more we talk about it, the more they're kind of willing to understand and listen. You know what I'm saying? But obviously mm-hmm. in the corners and in the back doors, the stigma is there, discrimination is there. Because I've even seen guys on Twitter, um, people come out on TikTok, you have so many people sharing their HIV status. And when you look at the um, comments, it's not as negative as you would expect people to be, you know, putting it out there. And you find more people even saying, oh, I've also been taking medication for 20 years. Oh, I've also... So I guess the more we keep the conversation going, the more people's mindsets also okay, change. I think, I think we also need to wrap it up. I think this conversation is going to be... It's not a once-off conversation. And I think... Um, we, we haven't even started STDs because that's another story. I believe. Mm. I don't know. For me personally, this whole entire thing since I found out has been the biggest blessing You've seen in that disguise. It's the bestest thing that's ever happened to you. I have really figured out who I am, mm-hmm. where I want to go the woman I want to be. Me fi- I've always had a level of really great confidence as a woman. Mm. Me finding out actually made me change my perspective on men so much. We like, don't take them that seriously. I don't. I've al- <laughs> No, I've always taken them seriously. That was my problem. That's why I got into trouble because I would go into something assuming, okay, if I'm going to be in a relationship with you, I expect marriage. I don't expect a once-off thing. Like, I'm going into it, being in a relationship with you, that's after dating I was dating. With dating, dating with purpose, Dating with purpose. Can you believe that it's the 35th commemoration since the pandemic had happened? We are now dealing with HIV, we're dealing with AIDS. I think there's a lot of facts that need to be spoken about. For example, nobody. But how about the khotop? But how about the negotiator? Nobody wants to get tested. So how far have we gone now, especially as beautiful individuals like you? What is the way forward and what do we do to fix our generations in terms of our kids? Your son is 13, my son, your daughter, right? Mm, my daughter. Your daughter is 13, my son is 17. There are plenty mm. of mothers. Can we, can we do better? Mm. And um, Lebo, I think maybe you can just give us more, more stats in terms of what, what is the way forward now to fix mm. our nation and not make this a pandemic? Mm. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. It's something that we're going to live with forever. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because there's, yeah. Not, not, there's no point where 100 people will be killed at the same time, right? Of course. So what do we do to do better? And as somebody who, 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 who has... Should we call it a disease? Like Knowledge. It's a disease. It's a disease. Mm. Do we, do we say a disease? Yeah, mm. it is what it is, man. Mm. Technically, on a technical term, it's not even classified under strict diseases anymore. It's a chronic. It's illness. a chronic disease. It's so chronic it's the same disease. thing as having diabetes, whatever. Having it's Diabetes is worse than having mm. HIV, actually. But this one you look for. This one is obviously because it's sexually transmitted, it's way worse of a pandemic, I guess, because it is mm. such a broad... It's a broad, it's a broad chronic yeah, disease, like, yeah. Well, I would like for you to enlighten us on what what do you think is the way forward? Well, I think maybe just to say after 35 years, a lot has been done, you know, in terms of upgrading medication, because before people would take a lot of pills, right? And we are down to one pill, you know. We even have PrEP, which people that are negative can drink to prevent an infection, you know what I'm saying? But the fact that most people in South Africa are on the one pill, which are less side effects, you know what I'm saying? Um, We have people living longer, you know, we've got education, we've got access to free condoms in clinics and so forth, you know? I feel like the government and everyone else who is doing work towards ending AIDS is actually doing a lot and has done a lot. We've actually come very far. And I think that we should stop saying that HIV has a face. Because there is no face to it? No, no, it doesn't. Mm-mm. There's no face. It doesn't matter where the f*** you're from. It is going to, if it's meant to happen to you or whatever, it will happen. Like, yeah. it doesn't It doesn't choose a skin colour. It doesn't choose whether you're a good person mm-hmm. or a bad person. It is what it is. When it happens, it happens. It doesn't choose a social status. And it's, yeah. it's not your fault, you know. It's not your fault. 
Um, Everybody's a victim at the end of the day. You have to remember that. Like, not one person is responsible for this entire pandemic. So, what, us being able to look at it in a calmer perspective and say, okay, actually, I am a victim to this. It did happen to me. It is a shit process. But, but it's also how? my fault. It's also, also about us no. taking responsibility. I mean, yes, responsibility. you can take your responsibility. Yes, you have to take your accountability. But in order to for you to get to that clear mental state, you've already gone through your responsibility. You already realized your fuck-ups. You already know your mistakes. For you to now take that, accept where you are at, accept the fuck-ups. City girls are here. We're going to change lives. And I appreciate you guys being honest. And we're going to do bigger things. I would like and to label and I just, I just want to say to thank you to Titi here for making sure that label is looking like money. <laughs> and um, babe, you know I love you for life. Yes, I love you long time. We can't really have that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're all the way over there. And you. Thank you so much it's for tequila, everything. Guys. It's still no, here. it's, it's, no, it's, 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 it's tequila. It's still thank here. you so much That's for my being guy. my support. Congratulations, really by the way, great. and welcome. Yeesh. Welcome to, to Welcome the HIV to the activist world. <laughs> to the, the new society. I'm She's excited. an HIV activist now, so welcome Amen. to that. Exactly. Okay. I'm excited. From the city girls, we out. We're about a tequila. We're going to turn up. We're about to have a party. I love these girls. Yes. Remember these faces. We are going to change lives. That's a group break. <laughs> it's not a group break. That's a group break. <laughs> So high five, bitches. High five, fuck. We're and, done. And don't take the bitch one, though, but high five. Okay, hi, girl. Hi, high five, girl. Oh, my damn. The prayer She's warrior. got tiny arms.